Hi, I'm Jay Scott. We're out here today with Jamil Sweb, and we're doing a photo shoot. We're going to be testing the M&P 10 AR platform in 308. First thing we're going to need to do is get this sighted in, and we're going to be using a laser light bore sighter today. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do before we put in the, the bore sight is we're going to make sure that the gun is cleared. So I'm going to go ahead and open the action, lock it back. Make sure there's no magazine in the gun. Action is clear. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and uh, turn on the laser light. So I've got the laser light here. It's got a little rotator switch. I'm just gonna turn it on and put it up against my hand here so I can see that the laser is indeed on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reach forward here and slide this into the end of the bore. Make sure it's seated properly. And we're good to go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down here, I'm going to get on the scope, and I'm going to point it down at our target here that has the daylight laser reflector target already attached to it. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and sit down behind the gun, take a look through the, through the scope. We're using a loophole Mark AR today. Go ahead and get behind the scope and uh, see where the laser is pointing on the target in relation to the crosshairs of the scope. Okay, I'm going to get comfortable behind the gun here, make sure I've got decent eye relief. I can adjust the stock if I need to. Okay, I've got the crosshairs lined up on the crosshair in the center of the target. It looks like I'm about, about an inch low with the, uh, with the laser. So I'll go ahead and take my caps off my elevation adjustment. And on this scope, if I rotate counterclockwise, that's going to allow me to bring it up. We're only at about 15 yards here, so I'm going to probably need about maybe six to eight clicks to go up an inch. That's about eight clicks Look through the scope. And I'm going to go about another two clicks. I'm almost right in the crosshairs there. Now it's a little bit left, probably about three quarters of an inch left. So I'll go ahead and take off my windage. And on this scope, to move it to the right is counterclockwise, so I need to bring it to the right. It's a little bit to the left, so I'm gonna go, let's go eight clicks on this one. That's eight clicks, see where we're at. Well, we're pretty much right there, but I'm gonna go up about another two clicks on my elevation just to try to get it perfected. That looks really good. All right, now before we go ahead and put some live ammo through the gun, we gotta remember, take the laser bore sighter out of the bore before we put ammo downrange. Don't laugh, it does happen. Ammo's expensive, but the bore sighter itself is about 65 bucks. So I'm gonna pop it on out of the End of the barrel, make sure I turn it off so I don't waste all my batteries. I'm gonna just point it at my hand so I can see the laser and rotate the switch on the barrel. Now we've got it turned off. We'll go ahead and set it down in a safe place. We're gonna get ready now to start putting some live rounds down range. All right, we're gonna head down range and put up a target that we can shoot at. We're gonna take off the laser reflector. First thing I'm gonna do before we let anybody walk down range is double check, make sure the gun is empty. So chamber's empty, a lock back, action open, no magazine in the gun. We're good to go, so let's head down range and go ahead and switch out the target. Okay, what we're going to do is peel off the daylight laser target. Get that out of the way. I'm going to peel off the back of my, uh, got a redhead shoot and see here. It's got five different targets that we can work with, so we can uh, work at a couple different distances. We're all set. Let's get back to the gun, load up some ammo, and see where we're at. All right, we're gonna be trying out a variety of ammo today. We got a little bit of everything. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the initial sight in with a little bit of Black Hills. We've also got some Hornaday Tap, some Remington, and some ASIM. They even have a little bit of Corbon back here. We don't have a ton of each one. As you know, ammo's a little bit on the short side these days, but these guys usually do well for us and, and make us, uh, supply us with a little bit of ammo to try out in the different gun tests that we do. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll try some Black Hills. I'm just gonna load up three rounds of it in my uh, mag here. Make sure I put it in the right direction. 
Don't be want don't want to be one of those guys on camera. Put them in backwards. But all right, let's get some hearing protection on. I'm gonna make sure my crew all has their hearing protection in. Personally, I can't really get behind a long gun with my uh, headphones on, so I always have to use the in-ear ear protection. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, stick our mag in. I got a, our target down there. It's got five different uh, targets. I'm going to go ahead and, and shoot for the upper left target with this, uh, with this round, see where we're at. Again, we're only at about 15 yards right now. But this is just going to give us a rough idea of where we are, and then we're going to move out as we get the gun more refined in terms of sighting. Go ahead and put it on safe. Load it around into the chamber. I'm going to get behind the gun. Okay, now, one of the things I need to do here is because I put the mag in, I'm going to have to raise up my rest a bit so I can get up to that target. All right, we're right about there. Go ahead and get behind the target, yeah, behind the gun. All right, we're going hot, guys. Okay, that's the first round. Looks like we went about an inch to the right and just about a half inch low. Could have been me, could have been where we're sighted in. It's hard to tell with just one round, so let's go ahead and put another one. Okay, we're pretty much right on top of the uh, first round, so that would appear to be where we're sighted in with this particular ammo at the moment. It could be that different ammo is going to shoot to a little bit different point of aim on the target. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot the third round out of this, see what kind of group we get where we're at. Then we'll go ahead and switch to a different ammo, shoot on a different target, see where we're at there. I think we'll also uh, start moving the target out a little ways. So let's go ahead and take a third shot. And see where we're at here. All right, once again, we'll show you in just a second, but once again, we're right on top of the, of the other two rounds. So I'd say we're pretty well sighted in for this ammo on that target. Got a nice group going. Uh, we can certainly adjust the sights for this ammo, but because we're going to shoot a bunch of different ones, we're not going to change it right now until we see where a couple other uh, types of ammo have to be impacting. So let me go ahead and clear the gun, and uh, we'll go from there. We're going to pop our mag. Chamber's clear. Action is locked open. We'll go ahead and change to a different ammo, see where we're at. All right, so we've gone ahead and moved the target out a little ways, uh, about to this full distance of this particular bay on our range, I'm using a Bushnell. Uh, yardage Pearl 1000 here. I'm just going to go ahead and measure it so we know what uh, kind of yardage we're at. So let me take a look here. And we are right at right at 80 yards. So we've got 80 yards here. That's good enough for what we're doing today. It'll give us an idea of, uh, of what we've got in terms of ammo and, and scope combination. All right, what we're going to do is go ahead and load up three, three rounds of the ASIM. Uh, this is ASIM Precision 308 Winchester 168 grain Barnes bullet. And we'll take three rounds. This time we're going to shoot to the upper right hand target and see where we're at with this. If we need to make a little bit of adjustment, we will. But really, we're kind of looking for groups as a, uh, with, a, with it, see what, what round groups the best. All right. Go ahead and warn my crew here that we're about to go hot. Everybody got your ear protection on. Okay, guys, it's going to be a little bit tougher shot. Shot, we're about 80 yards, so it's harder to through the scope to get on than it was at 15 yards, obviously. And I've got Yamil over here on the spotting scope. He's going to go ahead and call my shots for me. All right, here we go, guys. Safety off. And we're going to start putting the round down. That felt like a fairly decent shot. Let's see where we're at. Not on paper, high. High? All right, so right now we haven't found it on paper yet. Could have been me. Uh, could be this particular ammo is still rising. It's going to be rising at 100 yards. We may be over. So we're just going to kind of watch the, the berm impact here 
Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to shoot at the center of the target so that we have a better chance of seeing it. Because I'm shooting at the upper right hand target, if it's close to the edge, we may be off because of that. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot to the center of the target and hopefully we can locate it a little bit better. All right, third round going, guys. We're going for the center target. There you go. You're on the on the top of the top of the top right hand target, so you need to come down left about six inches and down about eight inches. All right, so my spotter, I was aiming at the center target. My spotter has called that I'm eight inches high, six inches to the right, correct? Correct. Okay, so what I'm gonna do again, we're pretty close to 100 yards, so I'm gonna come down 16 clicks. Sixteen clicks down, and we need to come to the left six inches. Yes. Left okay, so we're going to come off uh, twelve clicks to the left. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I only had three rounds in there. I'm just going to go ahead and put one more round in of the ASIM. Don't want to waste a lot of ammo. Got a couple to go through here. And I'm going to go back to the upper right hand target. If we did this right, we should be up in that upper right quadrant this time. Okay, so I've got one round in here. That makes this a zero to hero shot. Or it might be a zero. Go ahead and load it up. All right, guys, going to go hot. Safety off. Going to send this down range. Hearing protection on, guys. All right, so we did pretty good that time. Uh, we made those adjustments. Right now, we're about a half inch to the left and about two inches low. So that was pretty good. I'm not gonna make any adjustments. We got one round on that upper right-hand target. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot two more of the ASIM and we'll see what the grouping is. Okay, we're kind of shooting for groups. Once you get a good group, you can always adjust your point of impact. Uh, to be where you want to be on target, but first thing is always to achieve a good group. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my mag here and load up two more rounds of the ASIM. All right, safety's on. All right, guys, make sure you got your air protection in. Let's go again for uh, two more rounds on that upper right hand target. taking advantage of the rest here so I don't have to hold the gun up as much to get it on target. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, we're sending number two. It felt pretty good. Touching each other. All right, uh, right now we got two rounds basically touching each other, same spot. So we'll go ahead and send the third one, see what kind of group we can achieve. All right, guys, getting ready to send number three. Liar. Uh, what? Fire. Okay, next we're going to go ahead with uh, some Remington. This is a uh, 168 grain boat tail hollow point. 308, obviously. Yeah, let's see where we are with that. Okay, this one I'm going to go just go ahead clockwise around the target. We'll go to the uh, go for the lower right hand target. Guns on safe. Magazine in. 
Chamber, everybody got your hearing protection? All right, we're off safe. Lower right hand target. About an inch, about each to the right. Okay. Elevation perfect. Elevation looks real good. The impact was about an inch to the right of the center of that lower right hand target. So we're going to go ahead and send the second round down and see what kind of group we can do. Okay guys, hearing protection, Second, sending second round. Lower, but uh, same windage. How far apart? Uh, about half an inch, about an inch low. All right, so that was about an inch low. Uh, windage was good, still a little bit to the right, but again, we could always change point of impact. Let's go ahead and send the third round, see what kind of group we have. All right, so we're about a quarter inch to the left of the second shot. So, sounds like we probably got about a one inch group down there. Yep. yep. There we go. All right, that was the Remington 168 grain boat tail. All right, let's go with the uh, Hornaday tap. This is tactical application. This is a 155 grain uh, AMAX. Cap Urban. This is basically what Hornaday makes for uh, uh, law enforcement sniper type applications. So obviously you want a very uh, precise round in those type of situations. Alright. Got our three rounds of Hornaday tap loaded up. Let's go ahead and see where it goes. We're going to go ahead and move over to the uh, Left hand lower target for this one. All right, guys, ear protection in. Chambered safety off. Notice also, guys, just for a safety thing, I keep my finger off that trigger at all times till I'm actually sighted up, ready to fire. So make sure you keep that finger out of the trigger guard till you're ready to go. All right, guys, lower, lower right hand target. Felt good? You are inch right, I mean inch left, inch low. Okay, about an inch to the right, or left, sorry. About an inch to the left and about an inch low. Let's go ahead and send the second round, see what kind of group we can do. You're about an about two inches to the right. Elevation? Elevation exact. Okay, we got good elevation, a little two inches to the right. Again, that could be me. Got a little breeze going here. I don't think the breeze is really gonna be messing it up. It's either it's more than likely me, but let's go ahead and send the third one, see what kind of group we got. All right, guys, third one coming hot. far right. Yeah, I felt that one. I was about to call that one right. So uh, that was me, definitely. Uh, I felt it, drifted a little bit right. Uh, let's go ahead and send one more. Yep. See if I can get a good uh, shot off, because that was definitely me. This is a factory trigger in this gun. If you're going to be doing competition, wanting to get into some precise uh, shooting, I would definitely have a trigger uh, job put on this one. Uh, it, it's not a bad trigger, doesn't creep too much, but it is a little bit heavy, takes a little bit of time to get the, the nice trigger break. And when you're shooting at any distance, you got a lot of movement in your crosshairs and that kind of thing makes it more difficult. But 
So a little bit nicer trigger, be a little easier to shoot, but it's not a bad trigger. It's pretty decent for, for factory. All right, let's try one more. Much better shot. That one I okay, felt good that's with the first Next to the first one. Yeah, we're right next to the first one. Definitely a lot better shot than my third one. Third one, I definitely pulled it to the right. All right, we're done uh, shooting our ammo here. We shot five different types of ammo. I think we got some halfway decent groups. Uh, we're going to go ahead, head down range, grab our target frame, bring it back in. Again, no magazine in the gun, chamber's empty, action lock back, safety on. We're going to head down range. All right, today we are out shooting the Smith & Wesson MMP-10 and 308. Uh, this is pretty much how you get it from the uh, factory when you order it. You're going to get a M4 adjustable buttstock, a carbine uh, handguard, flash hider. Uh, now we've added a worn tactical mount as well as a loophole uh, Mark AR scope on it. This is a one and a half to four power. Uh, this would be a perfect setup for three gun competition, shooting heavy metal, uh, tech ops. Um, the trigger on it was, uh, it wasn't bad, a little bit of a long, heavy pull. Uh, certainly for competition, I'd go ahead and put a trigger in it, um, get some trigger work done on it. But it wasn't seriously um, an obstacle to getting some decent shots. As you can see on target, uh, up here we were shooting uh, some Black Hills. This is definitely, this is about 80 yards, so a little shy of uh, 100, but we certainly have a sub one inch group on that one. Uh, this was a sighter that we had. We were actually shooting at the center target. We had to bring it down, I think about uh, 16 clicks all together and about a dozen clicks over to the left, but once we got it sighted in, this is ASIM. I threw this one a little bit to the left. We shot a third shot and brought it back in. So we're probably at about uh, that one, one and a half inch group on that. Uh, this was Remington. Nice, nice little group down here for the Remington. Okay, this down here was uh, Hornaday tap ammo. Uh, again, this was me, threw it a little bit, called that shot as, uh, to the right, uh, but we put another round down there and got a halfway decent group. Again, probably about a, about a one and a half inch group down here. Uh, the last one here was Corbon, 168 grain Corbon, a uh, pretty decent group, one and a half. So everything was anywhere from about one inch to one and a half, and believe me, a lot of that could account to me. A uh, little bit bitter trigger, Probably would have had a little bit better break, but all in all, not a bad gun to shoot. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.